Welcome to today's Divorce Records webinar. It's lovely to have you all along to listen to our webinar today and hopefully you'll learn something about the records that we hold within the Museums of History New South Wales State Archives collection. We'll begin with an acknowledgement of country. In the spirit of record Reconciliation Museums of History New South Wales acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Okay, so divorce records within the Museums of History New South Wales State Archives collection. In today's webinar, I'll be discussing the following, the background of divorce records, the number of files we hold, dates these files cover, our main sources of records and how to access them, what we may find in the files and what they may tell us, changes over time and some additional sources of divorce records. Okay, so how to, how to find the divorce guide on our website. You go to the Museums of History New South Wales website, mhnsw.au, click on Explore State Archives, click Subjects A to Z, click on D, and scroll down to Divorce, click on the guides to the right hand side, and then click on the divorce records guide and you'll find all the information about the records we hold within the within our collection. Okay, so divorce files. Our records start with the introduction of the Matrimonial Causes Act, which was introduced in 1873. Divorce files can also be referred to as matrimonial causes files and contain the evidence for each divorce case. Within the files are the judicial separations and there may also be petitions for the dissolution of marriage and petitions for the maintenance of children, along with marriage certificates, letters, the decree nisi and the decree absolute. And But please note, not all files will contain photos, although it isn't a bonus. So how many files do we have? We have over 195,000 divorce files within our collection and about 2,000 of these files have been digitised and can be viewed online. Within the files, there are various terms that are frequently mentioned. The main terms include the decree nisi, which is the initial grant of divorce, initial conditional grant of divorce. The decree absolute is the final grant of divorce. The petitioner is the person who applies for a divorce. The respondent is the person against whom the petition is filed. And the co-respondent is the party with whom a married person is alleged to have committed adultery with. And this image we have to the right, it shows the petitioner within this file is William George Armstrong. The respondent is Lillian Armstrong and the co-respondent is James Tasker. So this means that William initiated the divorce against his wife Lillian with James Tasker as the person whom Lillian committed adultery. And we have a decree nice eye here for the divorce of Hilda Grace Element and Alan Vincent Element in 1971. Hilda is the petitioner and Alan is the respondent within this divorce. Now, if you're unsure if a divorce took place, marriage certificates up to 1983 were annotated when a marriage was dissolved. So that's a handy little tip there to confirm whether or not a divorce took place. We don't hold marriage, marriage certificates at New South Wales State Archives, Museums of History. So you'll need to purchase this from births, deaths and marriages. Our sources for divorce records. Our main series of divorce records is NRS 13495, Divorce Case Papers, 1873 to 1987. These contain the judicial separations as well as other documents such as the affidavits. And we hold the original divorce case papers for 1873 to January 1969. 
and then October 1969 to 1971 and 1976. Our next key series is NRS 13498, Decree Nisei, 1963 to 1976. And these are official copies of the Decree Nisei from the Supreme Court. We also have NRS 21360, the Index to Matrimonial Causes Files, 1873 to 1976. This is an alphabetical index recording the husband's and wife's names, as well as the file number. It's available on Fish in Our Reading Room, but please note that the card index for 1970 to 1974, the letters K-O-N to Z is missing. So unfortunately, if they are the letters that you are searching for, we do not hold those um, within the index. So how can I view the file? The divorce records can be viewed in our reading room. Copies can be purchased through our copy service and over 2,000 files are available online. But please note that divorces dated less than 75 years are not published to the website and you'll need to contact us to access these digitised files. How to access the records? Well, you'll, again, you'll need to go to Museums of History New South Wales website, which is mhnsw.au. Then click Explore State Archives. And to search our catalogue for files 1873 to 1971, you can, in the search bar, enter one of the party's names followed by the word divorce. So if the divorce you're looking for is Smith, you enter the word Smith followed by divorce and the results for that name will come up. And I'm sure for, um, for Smith, there will be quite a lot of divorce files that will be found. For files 1873 to 1923, our online subjects A to Z divorce index can be searched. Click on subjects A to Z, then click on D. Scroll to Divorce and click Indexes. Click on the Divorce Records Index and then enter the name and or place in the search bar at the bottom there. Click on the details of the result that you think is the results force that you um, are wanting to view or purchase copies of, you can, to order the record to our reading room, click on the black clipboard icon, then click on the orange clipboard to the right of the screen, click continue browsing to add more records, or if once you've finished, finalise the request list. And you can see that process there, clicking on the black clipboard, then clicking on the orange clipboard, and then either continue browsing or finalise request list. And then you will need to enter your details. And just a reminder that you'll need a reader's ticket to uh, view original records in our reading room. And you can apply for that number by cl clicking on the apply here tab. And to purchase a copy, again, click on the shopping cart icon this time, the black shopping cart icon, then select hard or hard copy or a digital copy, add to cart, then place the order, and then enter details as directed. And you do not need a reader's ticket to purchase copies of a record. For those divorce records we don't hold, contact us through our Ask an Archivist service for those 1976 papers not listed in, in our catalogue. For those records we don't hold between February and September 1969, contact the Supreme Court and contact the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia for records of divorce after 1976. So what the files may tell us, well, they can be a 
wonderful source of information for family historians. As they are an official record, they often provide a more impartial account of events. And they may provide some answers to some of the questions you may have about your ancestors. So they may clear up some, some issues that you've been debating and yet yeah, discover whether the information you had was either correct or has been skewed a little bit over time. There may also be marriage certificates, photos or letters in the files. And please note that again, not all files do contain photos. So I've just got an image here of one of the documents you may find in a divorce file. The number of the divorce is written in the top right hand corner. And for this divorce, it's 3038. The petitioner is William George Armstrong. The respondent is Lillian, in brackets also known as Lily Armstrong. And James Tasker is the co-respondent. That's one of the documents that you'll probably come across in the divorce files. Those petitioner and respondents will be listed. And if there is a co-respondent, they'll be listed there as well. And as well as the divorce number. Okay, the next image we've got here is an affidavit of the petitioner, William George Armstrong. And in this particular affidavit, William verifies that he is in fact the petitioner in these divorce cases. And often in the divorce files, you find several affidavits from diff different people verifying the um, events or circumstances that have led the petitioner to um, request a divorce. And some of these affidavits can be quite interesting and, and quite entertaining at times as well. Okay, so this, we have a photo of Lillian from um, the divorce file of Lillian and William George Armstrong. Um, in her affidavit, Alice Maria Dunstan verifies that Lillian Armstrong is the person in the photograph. Alice states, I recognise and identify the respondent as the female figure in the photograph shown to me at the time of swearing this is my affidavit. And that is dated 10th of March, 99. From this next image, we also learn that Lillian had two children with the co-respondent. The first baby was a male born prematurely and died three days after birth. Alice also states that as the respondent was in such a weak state, I laid the child out for burial and made all arrangements. So that's quite a, a sad story and perhaps something that um, relatives weren't aware of um, that happened to Lily. So that was just um, something else that the file has provided. And now we have, this is an extract from that same divorce file, ordering the decree Nisi be made absolute and the marriage be dissolved. It's dated Friday the 28th day of April in the year of our Lord, 1899, so 1899. And the quote reads, it is ordered and decreed that the decree Nisi be and the same is hereby made absolute and that the marriage of William George Armstrong, the above named is petitioner with Lillian, again in brackets, otherwise known as Lily, Armstrong, the above name respondent, be and the same is hereby dissolved by the court. So the petition for divorce has been approved and the marriage is now effectively dissolved. So changes over time. Well, initially only men could petition for divorce solely on the grounds of adultery. Um, at the time, divorces were extremely expensive and time consuming and they were out of reach for a lot of um, couples. So they may have chosen to separate rather than go through the legal divorce procedure. And for women, adultery was an additional clause to bigamy, cruelty or desertion. And that was another thing that um, they needed to provide proof of. 
A co-respondent was required in cases of adultery and husbands could actually claim damages from the co-respondents and against the property of their wife. We have an extract from the divorce file of Eleanor Patterson and Cecil Claude Patterson, 1914 to 1919, where the petitioner's husband has, without just cause or excuse, willfully deserted your petitioner and without any such cause or excuse, left her continuously so deserted during three years and upwards. Early Earlier files, especially those 1873 to 1900, are far more detailed than later files. Less evidence was required for divorce in the 1960s and 70s, and the reduced number of documents in these files reflects this. And this is an earlier extract from the divorce file of William and Lillian Armstrong, with questions in which would need to be answered by the judge to enable the dissolution of the marriage. And one of the questions um, is whether the respondent between the 1st of January 1896 and the 14th of September 1898 committed adultery with James Tosca for the, the co-respondent. So that is one of the questions the judge has to um, have answered sufficiently to go ahead with divorce dissolving the marriage. If you're having trouble finding a divorce record, you believe that there has been a divorce and it may, be, may be worthwhile checking other states and overseas. Perhaps one of the parties deserted or committed bigamy, so they simply disappeared or went on to marry someone else without going through the legal divorce procedure. And again, the cost of divorce was extremely expensive and it was not possible for many couples. They may have separated without getting legally divorced. And there's also the stigma associated with divorce during that time. So perhaps couples chose to just separate without going through the, um, the whole process of divorce. And it's also worthwhile to check newspaper and gazette articles on Trove as they are, um, there is a, often a wealth of information that you'll find on Trove. Some other sources to check records are the court reporting transcripts, but please note that not all divorce cases were transcribed and these are within series NRS 2713. Another source could be judge, judges' notebooks. And again, not all judges took notes, but it may be worthwhile checking. And there's also records from the Divorce and Matrimonial Causes Jurisdiction, NRS 13493, Minutes of Divorce and Matrimonial Causes, NRS 21952, the process books relating to matrimonial causes files may be another source. NRS 13499, copies of letters sent. And NRS 13501, orders for the payment of alimony may be another source to find information. Thank you for attending today's webinar. I hope it has provided some insight into divorce records at the Museums of History New South Wales State Archives Collection.